Welcome, everybody. That was our attempt at an intro. It was probably awful. This is Club Baroness for round three of the 2018-2019 tag tournament run by Murder Mastodon and Evolution, who I have both here with me. Hey, what's up? Evolution might still Hello. be Hello. Oh, there I'm he is. Here. I'm here. Hello, guys. Yeah, we're so glad to have you both here. And then we have a guest with us. We also have Invoker of Legend back from the dead. <laughs> hey, everybody. Yep, corpse recovery successful. So let's go ahead and get it underway. Uh, I'll let whichever you wants to run the show take it away. Is that going to be me today, Evo, since you're in your situation? Yeah, probably. Oh, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, all right. So the first thing we're going to discuss, well, I'm just going to speed right through it. First thing we're going to discuss is the last round matchup. So we have quite a few, there was quite a few good games uh, that occurred in the last round. A lot of teams evening out now that the uh, first round random draws are out of the way. So the first one we have on the list is It's Orange Baby and Snow Rise, or as I call them, Orange Snow, and Esper 51 and Shadow Shield. Uh, why don't you go start, uh, start us off with that one, Bregan? Orange and Snow Rise versus Esper and Shadow? Yes, sir. Goodness. I, you know, I casted this match. I'm trying to remember. I know Esper and Shadow won at 3-0. Yeah. It wasn't as clean as I'd want to see. Like, that's a team that, that hasn't quite found their stride yet, which is kind of... A lot of teams in this tournament, I would say. A lot of these teams, because of the new rules for partnering, um, a lot of these players have kind of found themselves in new, odd partnerships. And Esper and Shadow Shield, despite not being directly affected by that, are another team that I would say fits in that category. They haven't quite found their stride yet. They did take the win over Snow Rise and Orange. Uh, but Orange put up a pretty good fight. He got in a lot of good hits. Snow Rise has been showing uh, continued improvement throughout the tournaments that we've seen him in. Um, but it was a fun series overall. I, I do believe, if I recall correctly, it was 3-0 for Esper and Shadow. Yes, that is correct. Uh, I'm going to piggyback off what you said real quick. Uh, so, yeah, like you said, they did win 3-0, but it wasn't a clean victory, which I was you know, glad to see because Orange Baby and Snow Rise did pit in some work. Um, so they pit up a really good fight. Um, one thing, they Esper 51 and Shadow did... Like you said, have some rough spots, but I am very glad to see Esper is improving his communication in the game a lot. Um, you can see he's calling out moves, he's calling out what shields people have, which he never does when I play with him. So, you know, so he's actually trying during the matches to put in um, that communication that we spoke of when we first talked about that team. So and I really saw, you didn't see as much in this match, I think he was, they were a little more lax, but in the previous round, um, who I can't remember who they played, you saw it a whole lot from Esper and and Shadow Shield, so um, I think I think they're just going to keep getting better uh, in this round. Uh, well, it's probably not their best showing, but still, they took it 3-0. Uh, Evolution, what about you? So Esper and uh, Shadow Shield, um, Palace they kept the pressure on, uh, just following Orange Baby on with a blazing sword and blazing bullet. Um, I, I don't know if Orange was lagging. I'm not entirely sure, but I remember Esper making the comment that he couldn't get a hit on him. Um, you know, and Shadow was doing his whole, uh, you know what, give me one second and I'll be able to tell you I've done my research already. For these two. Um, so, uh, so Shadow was running a nature key. Or, sorry, that's round one. Round two was Shadow was running a faith key. I was re and buff and like popping while Esper was running around with his nature blazing. Um, you saw that uh, Shadow was, you know, playing very defensively. Uh, he wasn't getting a lot of hits in, but Esper was putting on enough pressure to keep uh, Orange out of his base while Shadow popped him. Uh, Highway was the next map. I'm not entirely sure what the goal was uh, for Orange and um, Snow. They kept throwing out uh, Reduce Century. But um, they, they didn't use it very effectively. They just placed it and, and ran, pretty much. Um, you know, and it looked like it actually kind of shut down Esper and Shadow. Uh, Shadow was running a, a Faith Key again, and Esper was running an Optic Nature, I believe. Uh, it was interesting to see. And then City, City was a pretty big shutdown. Shadow brought his Dance of Death and Psycho First Mix, which is kind of 
uh, a little overkill, I think, but, you know, King of Melee. Um, and Esper was running a Memory of Battle. Uh, there were very clean victories, uh, or at least City was. Uh, Highway was a bit of a mess, but I was impressed by the gameplay that Orange and Snow did. They were getting damage. They, they kept Shadow and uh, Esper pretty low health. They, it was an overall good match. I'm excited to see uh, the next round of opponents. You know, and Orange and as far as Esper and Shadow, they're going down. So. <laughs> Of course they are. Uh, and Voker, do you got anything to add to that round? Uh, yeah, well, like I told you guys before I came in here, I haven't actually seen um, a whole lot from this round of the tournament. I I saw some snippets here and again while I was on the toilet. <laughs> Not to give you too much information there. Uh, but well, just looking at the names right there, I didn't, I didn't see this match at all, but you would expect uh, for Esper and Shadow Shield to come out on top. Um, I haven't seen them play at all actually together, but they're just two strong, really strong players who are, I mean, to, to me, even, I mean, I don't know, I just, I wouldn't want to face those two guys, so, um, it's pretty, pretty much what I would expect is that they would have won the match, and that's something that's sort of interesting about this, this tournament that you guys came up here with, and I think that it really, I think you're attacking, you know, sort of the core of one of the major issues facing the game is that there are, there, there are just these powerhouse teams that people, just don't want to face, you know, you get your Zexus and your Zexus and your, you know, Bregan and PD and all these guys that are just, you know, seasoned players that play together and win, like, every time. And it just takes away a lot of the thrill for less experienced players. So it's just cool to see players, you know, like Esper, you know, Sh and Shadow Shield partnering up. Well, they weren't a team before, but just to see some of those powerhouse teams broken up is just pretty cool. Yeah, that was, the, was definitely the goal there get some of the staleness that people were failing out out from the system. All I right. think it also created, like, well, I don't want to cut you off there, but no, the, other thought I, the other thought I had with that is that you've also created now some potentially new powerhouse teams and interesting dynamics in that uh, things like, well, for instance, Kamikaze Mario and some poor choices having never actually won together still get to play together. And so they become Hold on, one of the strongest. I'm going to cut you off. Let's save that thought for later on because we're going to be discussing that kind of thing huh? later on. Okay. In All right. The list. All right. So hold on to that. All right. So like um, Invoker said, the next round up is Kamikaze Choices versus Kanye West and Ebony Scarface. Uh, Evo, how about you start us off on this one? That match was really good. Um, exactly what I thought it was. Well, no, it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Uh, I take that back. Kanye and Ebony showed a different side of the playbook. Um, they didn't bring a, a jank arsenal at one time. They played Ebony, or they played Mario, which was straight up, and they beat him at it. And um, I don't feel like it was due to overplaning on Mario and Choice's side because their arsenals looked like typical vanilla Mario choices built. So, it kind of threw a monkey wrench in a lot of people's game plan running into Ebony and Kanye. I, I feel like a lot of people were uh, getting wise to their game and thought that they'd you know, start because it's a out and call it a wrap, but uh, they showed that they can, they can bang the best of them. Um, all three matches were very well done. I believe it was Palace Refinery and uh, Panorama and I believe City was the fourth. Um, Panorama went into favor of Choices of Mario. Uh, I believe I, I talked to Kanye and Kanye said that he had a shield for when he went down, but uh, you know, uh, got hit the wrong button and uh, left Ebony with an excruciatingly painful picked up cross map on the second floor, which was being locked down by a ricochet laser and a tiger shot hyper kick up. Um, at that point, there's not a lot you can do. Uh, it's very difficult. Um, Ebony made a valiant effort, and that lost them. One of their matches, they came back with a clean win on a uh, refinery, and City uh, to finish it off. Very impressive. Um, good recap there, Evo. Yeah, that, they were a good series of matches. Um, Bregan, you want to go next? Uh, on that series? Yeah, Kanye West and uh, Ebony versus Kamikaze Choices. So I talked about how I've got this general feeling where a lot of the teams in this tournament have been experiencing 
uh, a bit of a stumble, you know, trying to find that synergy. Uh, not super impressed with a lot of teams so far, but these are probably the two teams I would say that the least about. Uh, Mario and Choices I agree. Are, are about the same as what you would expect in previous tournaments. They're still going to be tough in this tournament. I could see them pulling another good top four finish, uh, maybe going out all the way. I think right here, though, this is one of the bigger mountains they needed to face was Kanye and Ebony, and that's something that they've been previously good at taking on here, but Kanye and Ebony just came out swinging. Instead of playing their normal you know, grind-out style, they came out swinging, and they outfought them on every front. Even the game they lost was very close. And so that was something that impressed me. Those two have not shown that same stumble a lot of other teams have had. Uh, they show the synergy. Uh, you know, Obviously, they played together a lot before this tournament as it was, and they're showing it here in this one as well. They're playing really strong. They're playing clean. Uh, they've got good, nasty, you know, grind out a race when they decide to go for it. And uh, they showed right here that they are one of the best fighting teams in the tournament right now because they took Mario and Choices on head-to-head. -head. And uh, I don't want to use the word quite dumpster, but they, they smashed on them. Like, it was, it was definitely in their favor. Uh, Mario and Choices might be able to come back. I think they need to find some more answers in their playbook. Everybody knows they run key faith and they, run, they play very safe. I think they need to come out with some more answers and some new strategies if they want to take this tournament. But those are the two teams I would say right now are showing the most, you know, the least weaknesses, the least holes in their gameplay. Yeah, I, I agree with you on um, most of your points there. Um, Kanye West and Ebony play probably play together more than any other team in the game right now. So that synergy they have has just been building up and building up, and it comes out during their matches real smooth and easy. And I was very surprised when they didn't pull out any any quantum DKs or violent changes. Um, and I think it's going to catch a lot of teams off guard because you still want to pack you know, your just-in-case moves. But then when you have them and you don't need them, it's just a dead draw. So I think that's something uh, Connie and Ebony have going for them. You never know when they're going to decide to pull out that that quantum DK or that violent change, um, and you're not going to be ready for it because you didn't expect it, or you, they didn't bring it, and now you have those dead dead draws. Um, yeah, I feel they were all very very close matches. Kamikaze Mario and some poor choices I feel like are playing just as good as they used to, in my opinion, um, but they're not improving, which I think is slowing them down. If that makes sense. So, but I, I would still hold them high in the tournament, just like Bregan said, still would. Yeah, one thing I guess I would clarify is when I say the teams with the least weaknesses or like best synergy, that doesn't mean I think they're the best teams. I would just say I, that I they understand. have the fewest holes in their gameplay right now. The most yes. complete teams. Yeah. All right, Invoker, you got anything you want to add on that one? Uh, yeah, okay, so this is one of the matches that I actually did see. Um, because I was pretty interested, and actually I was playing with Kamikaze and Choices, you know, warming them up leading into that match, so um, I was really surprised to see no Quantum Decay. I kind of feel bad, like I was telling them they should definitely expect it. <laughs> I mean, you so ruined like, them! <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they weren't taking what I was saying too seriously anyway, but I mean, it's just, it was surprising to see that they came out and they wanted to fight instead. I, and that, uh, you know, because it's not, to me, in the, in the past, it's not like... It, you want to pack it in case they bring it. It's like, they're definitely bringing it, they're definitely using it. You have to pack it, you're stupid if you don't. And they just took it through that whole idea of the window, which I would guess was an intentional move on their part, just to change gears and keep people on their toes. Just a really smart move, and I think they're going to be one of the teams to beat here. Like, absolutely. Wouldn't surprise me to see them in the final round. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I did have them as my team to take it when we did our first podcast for this tournament. Uh, excuse me, Evo, I didn't catch that. Oh, as did I. They were my team to beat as well. Yeah. All uh, right. So, good good, good commentary there, Invoker. Thank you. So, we're going to move on. So, next match is Evolution has to shut up match because we have Zanxus and Evolution versus Daffy Duck and War Dog Akuma. Yeah, uh, Bregan. yet. So this one, I I really like the team of War Duck, and I think they put up a valiant effort, but it went as most people expected. Um, Zanxus and Evo took it 3-0, very clean. 
And they every round, Zangus and Evo had that pressure that I feel like they didn't they didn't quite have it the, in round one, but in round two, they had it every round. It was they were out on they were on point fast, and they were ready to attack. Um, not to say that Daffy and Wardog didn't have um, put up some good fights, but at the same time, you see some of the experience in between the two teams. Uh, way down Daffy and Wardog. You see Wardog going in, not properly prepared to attack, but he does the Wardog thing, hence his name, and just goes in, no shield, doesn't know what people have to attack, and then Daffy is trying to do the pickup game in a 2v1 versus two people. I do not want to be 2v1 with. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a clean victory, um, but like I said, Daffy and Wardog, I wouldn't say he got destroyed, even though with a 3-0. They definitely got rushed and taken off their feet, though. I will say that. I liked some of the variability in the strategies. You know, once I, I went back and rewatched some of it, uh, I liked the innovation out of Evolution and Zanxus. Um The Fairy Ring would still be something that might need to grow on me, but I've heard it's had really good results in practice as well. Uh, I think the thing that I noticed in this match, like I would have definitely waited at Zanxus and Evolution to win, but I did feel a little disappointed in the play from Daffy and Wardog that match. Um, not that I would have pegged them to win, like I said, but I, I expected a little bit more out of them. Uh, they're both very aggressive players, and they tend to be pretty good at laying down pressure, and I didn't see very good coordination from them that round. Uh, they got caught yeah. out a lot, and they took a lot of unnecessary damage. Yeah, I, I do. especially Wardog once again. Wardog, if you're listening, play Shield, man. <laughs> play Shields. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. No Shield. <laughs> Just pack oh, yeah, more lasers. Not... <laughs> <laughs> yes, listen to the Laser King. <laughs> yeah, and I think you know Zanxus and Evolution have shown pretty good synergy, but they've shown some some holes as well here, and we're still seeing that. Um, I would have them up there as one of my top two teams right now. I think but they've still got holes that they need to fill in, holes that they need to cover. And we saw some of those exploited in this series and in their round one. And I'm hoping to see them address that in the future going forwards too. Yeah. I, I have more to say on that team, but I'll save it for after the after this. Um, Evo, do you want to say anything about the match, or do you want to see us move on? Is there anything that you want to talk about uh, Daffy and Wardogs play there? Since you experienced it firsthand? Is. The only thing is, uh, in the commentary on the video, Reagan questioned uh, the palace match with the fairy ring. Just to clarify, um, why I believe in the fairy ring is because a lot of people don't know this, but it is capable of an infinite loop. Um, if you jump fairy ring and it gets instantly used again, it stands you right back up, just the armor of wood if you had stats. So. Uh, I could never get quite get it off the ground that match. It kind of came out backwards. I got the viciouses super early, um, which isn't what I intended. Uh, but basically, what would have happened if it had fallen right would uh, we would have trapped somebody, whether it be Daffy or the jumper or dog, in an infinite loop of getting hit with six damage key palms and a eight damage backdraft bullet uh, that can't be avoided whether you have orb or not um, because. Uh, the fairy ring is actually uh, minus single school and is a bit cheaper to use than an orb would be in a two school. Um, so I can actually beat it down and then I'm running a course to my healing and glacial balls and ice sword. And then the other issue, the thing that Reagan questioned was on lane when Wargog rushed me in my base with a fire Gehenna and instantly took a lot of damage. Uh, that was a vacuum slash into ice sword. He had taken and then hit me with a phenomenal Psycho Spear. I was actually really impressed by that one. But yeah, that's pretty much it, just to clarify a few things. And there we go. We should not have let Evolution talk. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I've been on the receiving end of that fairy ring bullshit. And it, it is not fun when you get caught in it, and it is not possible to avoid it. But I will say it takes a lot of coordination by those two and impeccable timing on the. Um, on the key palm, so it's not like it's easy to do. All right, so now I'm going to shut up, and uh, we have the next match, which is 
OG Kuma and Doom, which I have not been able to come up with a cool name for them, versus myself and SC War Machine, Team Murder Machine. Dude. Uh, <laughs> Okay, from now on. That's not very good. <laughs> I mean, it's the name. I couldn't think of one, so Doogee, yeah. Or Doom Kuma. Oh, whatever. Doom Kuma is pretty cool. They might not right. like it, but it's Doogee. <laughs> Sounds awfully close to another word. Oh, gee, All right, Kuma. Um, uh, Evo, since you can actually go on the last round, you, you start off. So I predicted this matchup to go completely the other way. Uh... I, I, you know, and after I, I was watching the video, I wasn't really surprised. Doom, of all the people in this game, I never thought I would say this about, but, bro, what were you doing with your Arsenal builds? Uh, I mean, I'm used to Doom coming out the gate like a cannon, and uh, he was running a lot of 7-plus cost moves that are very un-Doom-like, um, which, you know, slowed him down, and War Machine was on point on Palace, just right out the gate, rushed OG. Uh, took control of that matchup, really. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember the order. Uh, was it City next or Highway? It was Palace, City, Highway. Right. Uh, same thing on City. I believe Doom ran the same arsenal twice. And um, slow startup. Uh, just, and he got the worst spawn in, on the map on top of it. But... Uh, <laughs> didn't feel like I was watching Doom play. It, 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 it didn't at all. And and then Highway, I, I don't know, I thought Doom and OG were going to pull the, the reverse win on that one, and then that railgun came out of nowhere and killed OG. Um, wasn't a whole lot that could happen after that other than taking the L, so there's not, there, there's so much to say, but nothing to say about that match. It just it didn't feel like the team I thought was playing. All right, Bregan, do you want to add anything? I mean, I you always get all of it in the commentary too, but on reflection, yeah. it's similar um, to the thoughts he was expressing. I don't know if I'd go so hard there. Um, I, I'd wrap it up saying a bit like I did at the end of the match there, that I felt like War Machine and yourself, Murder, showed some good synergy there. Uh, it's the only time we've gotten to see you there. I've watched some of your other streamed matches and I've seen, you know, some ups and some downs, but you guys played pretty tight phantom dust there. I wouldn't, you know, jump out and sing hallelujah. Like that was, you know, phenomenal. Like it was good, tight, solid, you know, pressure. There weren't any mistakes. Uh, I was you know impressed that there, there wasn't any big mishaps or anything like that. So it was, it was a good solid play there, but really it did feel a little off from doom and OG there. Uh, OG's new to the tournaments. So, you know, it's hard to have a full read on him, but we definitely saw a lot of slow starts out of Doom. And, like, one thing that I really noticed is, like, on the highway match, like, he was super insistent about, like, if you watch it from his perspective, that guy would not overwrite to get to his railguns, which are, like, his bread and butter. We've talked about it before. If Doom were an artist, you know, railgun is his paintbrush. Like, he is fantastic with that move. And he spent, like, a full, what, three, four minutes just screwing around with a big bomb, not using his acquisitions or his railguns. Like it, Which, there, the big there was bomb was really doing work. I mean, the big bomb is not that it didn't do work, but like he he could have easily gotten to a railgun. He had him on base. He was at like eight or nine capsules, and he just wasn't willing to go get it. Um, or I, like I, I noticed that when we were playing, and I think the reason he did that because I was popping his capsules, and he didn't want to go too low. I think that's why he was doing it. I'm not sure. I mean, maybe. But, like, it was definitely needed. He needed a railgun. He needed to go after that dark hole on War Machine, pop it with the big bomb, instead of attacking you over and over because you weren't going to take it. Um, he, he needed a railgun. Like, that was pure and simple. He had two of them. You know, he could have broken either one of the – because I think you had a flash hole too. He could have broken one shield, picked up the other, and that might have been a big game changer right there. Because you can even – you can still play around a flash hole anyway with a railgun. Um, but – yeah, it, it felt like a different team from round one. They did not look – like, I, I, I don't want to take away from you guys' win because you guys play good Phantom Dust, but they did not look in sync that round. Yeah, don't let my commentary take it away. Like I said, uh, War Machine was on point. You know, he carried your ass in the palace. And then you two had this great synergy in the other maps. Uh, definitely, because me and Zan screamed you guys, you know, 
often, but often enough where that, that just did not, it didn't look like the practice team that we were used to playing. You guys were definitely on point, but then at the same time, on the other side of the coin, Doom and OG were not Doom and OG that, that matchup. Well, and Doom was running some, like, heavy arsenals, too. Like, I was surprised to see him running a 17 aura arsenal in two out of three games. Or, excuse me, a 17 skill arsenal. And it was a vibration one. He was running a 17 skill arsenal with only two level amps. And uh, it had multiple vibration moves and a photon burst in there. And so we saw that bite him both round, both rounds he ran it. Like, it took him forever to get set up. Like, it's, normally, I have no criticisms for Doom Arsenals other than saying, man, that stuff's weird looking. But uh, I did not like that 17 skill vibration deck at all. Uh, Invoker, uh, you got anything to add if you saw that one? Yeah, I mean, I did see this one actually, too. Um, uh, I, I mean, you guys have pretty much covered all the bases here with everything. I, a lot of my... A lot of my opinions are fairly similar to what you're saying. I did actually expect um, you, Murder, and War Machine to, to win this one. I don't know about anybody else, but and that's oh, just... Well, thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, I just... Whatever, I purely was basing that around the fact that I just haven't seen Doom play a whole lot. I know he's really good, um, but I've seen all the other three play a lot, and uh, that was just my feeling was that you guys were going to win going in, so I wasn't super surprised by what I was watching. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to... Add in something real quick. I'm just gonna say, War Machine really did pit in some freaking work. Uh, he, yeah. when we play scrims, I feel like he played. I was telling Evo this. He played so much better. I, he surprised me with how much better he played in an actual match with like stress on. He, he was dodging vibration blasters. He was. He knew when to pit pressure. He, he knew when to save my ass. Vibration yeah, yeah. He, so he fucking jumped two vibration blasters back to back on on city at off yeah. the range. That was insane. Yeah, I even pointed that out in the middle of the cast. Like that was some fantastic hops right there. Yeah. So that that's all I'm gonna say about the match with War Machine. Put in some work. All right. So next round, which I will admit I did not watch. Um, but we have Zexus and Sardonic versus Mirage and Darcia. It only went up today, so I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. you have seen it. I, I uh, Did you see it, Evo? Yeah, I've watched every single match that's been posted. Okay, um, then. Uh, yeah, take it away, Evo. Take it away. So, Palace was a shit show. Uh, no offense to anybody, but um, I don't. Uh, both teams were just taking unnecessary hits. They had shields. Both teams decided to be fair, they Darcia to did not take hardly any damage until Okay, the okay, you're right, you're right. Area. Darcia was at like 14 health the entire match. Um, so, uh, let me rephrase that. Mirage and Sardonic both took a massive amount of hits, and then both had excellent pickups to make up for them. So, um, I, I, I don't know if it was like first round jitters on both ends, or there were distractions going on, but Palace was, Palace was definitely, uh, an interesting one, and it cleaned up after that. Both teams performed exceptionally well after that, but um, I, I was kind of jaw dropped in awe while watching Palace at the amount of hits people were taking with shields in hand. Just not useful. Um, you know, and then it, uh, well, I, I, I gotta say, you can't you can't leave Zexus out of that too. Zexus was not on his best defense game that that Palace match no, either. No, um, neither. Either were. In fact, if anyone showed up that game, that Palace match to play, it was Darcy. Um, I believe that the end, uh, Zex and Sardonic both were at three health or maybe less uh, respawning, and, and uh, Zex finished it off with a diabolical trick at last minute um, to blow up the win. Uh, that, that was. It was impressive, but it was at the same time. I don't know. Well, I mean, the, the narrative of Palace is, yeah, they didn't play a very good game, Sardonic and Zexus, but the bigger mistake almost was that Mirage and Darcia failed to break Zexus's dark hole in a timely manner. I think they yeah, lost a total of five or six attacks to the one dark hole of Zexus. And especially, I think Darcia lost like four or five of those to Zexus. Like, they lost... A lot. It could have been as many as seven attacks lost to that dark hole. So wow. bring, might be bringing, yeah. bringing a dark That's hole and the diabolical <laughs> trick. That was that was really the story of it. Is that despite getting their ass beat from one end of palace to the other, 
for a good eight minutes. They eventually ate all of Darcia's attacks. They popped it out, turned it to a 2v1, and that was it. Darcia stayed with so much health because he was in his base for so long digging. He wasn't getting in the fight. I mean, he was fighting. He did, he did plenty of damage, and he did uh, quite a bit of it, but he lost many, many attacks to that dark hole. I'm poking fun. I, I, you know, and another thing, too, is what amazes me is Darcy and Mirage took me and Zayn out on Palace and were so close to doing the exact thing, the exact same arsenal to, to Zex and Sardonic. Um, hey, so I gotta go. Well, sorry. Okay, man. Later. Somebody's house is on fire. I'm assuming that's the person who's leaving the call. Yeah. At least temporarily. <laughs> Hope everything's all right. Um, I'm sure he'll be back. What were the uh, next two matches played? I, I, honestly, I don't quite uh, remember. The last one on the list for round two, because mine didn't get played, was I'm a Pro and Sentinel versus Skaboss and Wipes. All right, let's um, let's finish up the Sardonic and Sexus. And I, I was actually referring to what maps. Were the one oh, what I maps watched. did they play? Um, City and was it? No, they played Highway. And then they played Refinery. Okay. All right. Um, that's right. I'm trying to review it. I'm trying to think in my mind. I watched it early this morning. Highway was pretty ugly. Um, they both tried to play a little bit of jank into each other. Uh, violent change versus reduce entropy. And I didn't really like either team's execution, but one team did have to win. It's kind of what it felt like. That's right, and I believe the friendships were really what uh, handled that. Yeah, I mean, that, that was really all it was. Is you threw friendships in Zexus, and he just started pooping on kids. Like, that was about it. Um, the reduced entropy was sloppy. Uh, the violent changing was sloppy. And, uh, yeah, five damage reincarnation for the win. That was it. Pretty much. Uh, somebody just tried to share video. Fred, are you okay? I'm good. Sorry. My wife was just cooking, and... Oh, it was on fire. Oh, okay. I'm back. Hey, Sorry about that. Boy, make sure your house wasn't burning down. It's just the white stuff. All right, so so where are we at? I'm sorry, guys. Uh, we're discussing the refinery matchup. Uh, okay, Zex we're still Zardonic. insulting Zexus and okay. Sardonic. Yeah, I, that's what I picked <laughs> up on. All right, you guys keep going. I just want to be on the same page. <laughs> so I refinery. Think, I, I thought I thought Palace had its mistakes, but Highway was the one that disappointed me the most. I think. I thought Palace was fun to watch. I thought there was some mistakes, but it was good. It, there was still good things happening. I felt like there weren't a lot of good things happening on highway for either team. So here's my thoughts on the whole situation. Um, Zexus and Sardonic, I don't believe, have found that, that niche, niche, however you pronounce it, niche, I think. Anyways, I don't think they've quite found that synergy. Um, and my recommendation personally to them would be Sexus and Zanxus have accelerated so well as a team because of Sexus being able to be one of the best, in my opinion, support players in the game. Um, and as of right now, I, I feel as though Sardonic is attempting the support role with Hello and which with Sexus pulling the lead role. I feel like they should switch it up. Um, I, I can't think of another player in the game that I want spamming low-cost attacks at my opponents while I set up for the mid to big hit damage. Um, that, that's where I'm going with it. I think they should change roles. Uh, if they do that, I feel like they're going to impress a lot more people. But for people. Uh, you get that's it. I'm done. Do you guys got anything else to add to that one? Uh, I guess I would just touch on Refinery. Uh, Evo's kind of being drowned out by whatever he's got going on over there. Refinery uh, was disappointing for Mirage and Darcia. They ran some Quantum Decay stuff. It looked like they wanted to set up a loop. But I'm pretty sure they Quantum Decayed themselves out of the game. Uh, they tried on a last desperate attempt to start popping out uh, Zexus. And I think they did get one pop out. But they were being popped out in the process. And they got popped out faster. And uh, just in general, whatever their plan was there, which was clearly level erase into some sort of pop out, uh, they did they executed it quite poorly, um, which was unfortunate. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they're going for the recall loop because I saw a lot of yellows, but refinery 
Uh, we know them as kind of the erase kings in these tournaments, you know, Mirage and Darcia, and uh, that was not good. That was, that was not the same level of shenanigans from which we normally expect out of those two. All right, and Voker, do you have anything to add to that? Like I said, I didn't get to see that one. Uh, yeah, so I didn't see this one either. Um, but I guess, I mean, I guess it probably, I don't know, I don't really have anything interesting to add to it. I don't want to be talking about things that I don't really know about since I didn't see it, so. All right, we'll move on for now then. We do have a lot of stuff we'll be able to add in later. Um, the next round is another one I did not see. I'm guilty. Yeah, it was the Mirage Dars. Excuse me, looking at the wrong one. It was the Mofo I'm a Pro, which is the <laughs> most fun name to say out of everyone he's playing. And okay. Sentinel 1979 versus the First Skaboss and Wipes Forward, also known as Team the First Wipe. <laughs> what? That is their team name. I actually just realized I haven't actually seen this one. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. All right. Um, I'm a pro in Sentinel, clearly newcomers to the tournament. Uh, we saw a little bit of improvement from round one. They looked all right here. Uh, but they are up against veteran players in Ska and Wipes here. And that really showed. The experience was clearly the deciding factor here. It ended in a 3-0 for Ska and Wipes. Um, I, I don't like calling them Wipes. Bromeo. It was Bromeo. Ska and uh, Bromeo played some pretty good Phantom Dust there. Uh, I didn't see any major holes in their play, but I wasn't super impressed either. Like I felt like they weren't super challenged in this round. Uh, but I was impressed with, you know, I'm a pro and Sentinel showing some growth from the last round. Uh, their arsenals flowed a little bit better, showed more synergy, and they put down more damage than they did in round one. So I was glad to see some growth out of them and see some improvement there. And it'll be fun to see them in this next round, I think, as well. Yeah, they are a team I enjoy watching play, uh, Skaboss and Wipes. And just, I do enjoy uh, watching MoFo and Sentinel play as well, just because I like seeing. I was going to uh, say, you enjoyed teams. them so much you didn't watch this week. Yeah, I know. But usually I do. I actually just totally <laughs> forgot. I'm sorry, Skaboss and Wipes and MoFo. I will watch you guys' match. And I'm going to come up with a name for MoFo Sentinel uh, before the. Blast. Hashtag on blast, I know. All right, next, uh, Invoker, sorry. Did you want to add anything to that one? I, no, uh, not really. I didn't see this one either. But I okay, just, so, we're, what, so we're all just a bunch of assholes. Well, <laughs> except for me. I didn't, who <laughs> except for are Brandon. these guys? Mofo, I'm a pro. I've never even seen those guys before. Uh, we'll touch on them later. Mo, they both are uh, cool dudes. They are both real chill. And uh, I've played with, I've never played with Sentinel. I've seen them in the chat. Uh, but Mofo is an extremely chill dude who's just fun to play with. Okay. Uh, anyway. Moving on, next match. Bregan, 1, 2, 3, and Gotrix versus Jay and Math. Uh, short here, uh, this match actually did not occur. Uh, Bregan, 1, 2, 3, and Gotrix took a victory via disqualification, so they were awarded three points. Jay and Math have decided to drop from the tournament for personal reasons. Um, so they will no longer be with us. And that brings us into our, the next topic I'll just go over real quickly. Uh, Silent79 and Hexakiro got a buy this round. Uh, but since there will be no more buys for the tournament, since we have, are at an even number, uh, myself and <clears throat> War Machine will play the other team who got a buy so we can even out the points. So, that, Does anyone have anything that I want to add to that subject? So what you're saying is that because you and War Machine had a buy in round one, and Silent and Hex had a buy in round two, when we had uneven teams, we're going to give the opportunity both teams to make up those buy rounds by playing one another. Exactly, yeah. The Perfect. elongated version. So if there's any questions about that, you can uh, refer them to me or Evo. All right. Good job, everyone. That was round two matchups. Um, I am really sad I didn't get to see that match. I was very excited for it. I will, I will say that. I, I feel like it would have been a very good match. All right. <clears throat> Moving on, round three matchups. So we people we have until January twelfth, eleven fifty nine p.m. Eastern time to play our round three matches. Um, there's some really good ones here on the docket. Um, some ones I'm really excited about, and, and some that I I kind of feel bad about at the same time. And we'll, and we'll get to that when we get there. Um, but let's let's start from the top with actually let's start from the bottom. Let's start with the 
the currently ranked lowest teams, not, not to say they don't have a chance at tournament, that's just the way the points are right now, they still can get in depending on how things pan out. So let's start with Mirage and Darcia versus Mofo and Sentinel. Um, Invoker, you let, let's let you take this one to start off. off all right? Sure. Um, okay, so uh, as I just iterated, I haven't really seen, or even at all, I haven't seen Mofo or Sentinel in action, or even at all in the game. Um, and just you know just what? based I'm on that, the, I'm going to put them on to play in the background because y'all suck. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. No, I just watch it, who's watching this podcast? You're fucking watching it now. So I haven't been playing a whole lot myself either. That's the other end of this. It's not their fault. I haven't seen them online. Probably mostly my fault. Um, but just basing uh, my opinion on that fact alone, I would have to give this to Mirage and Darcy. I would expect that, that Mirage and Darcy are going to come out with the win here. That's just purely basing it on the fact that they are veteran players who have a lot of time together versus what must be very new players. So that's about, that's about all I have to put into that one. What uh, victory do you give them? A 3-1, 3-2, 3-0? Are we doing that now? We're going to do predictions? Um, yeah. 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 Um, I'll go ahead and say Miraz and Darcy would take it 3-0. 3-0? Okay. Um, Evolution, since Bregan is, needs to calm down a little bit, he's mad at us, and I, I apologize, Bregan. <laughs> Let's let you uh, go next. Miraz and Darcy already beat me and Zan on Alice, and they almost beat Six, six, or something on Palace. So I'm definitely giving one of those victories to them on Palace. Um, based on track records thus far, I'm going to say that they're going to drop the ball with the race on a second round. So one's going to go to both on the second or the one one. And I'm going to finish it off with uh, Mirage and Garcia cleaning up their act and finishing it off with a three. Three one okay. victory. All right, uh, Bregan. Uh, I think Mirage and Darcia definitely come in with an advantage with that existing synergy and showing some decent showing so far despite their record. Uh, so I think that uh, if they play especially that race style, I don't know that Sentinel and Pro are going to be ready for it, and I think that could be devastating for them to play against that race style. And, uh, I mean, it could be a lot of fun, too. Watching some of the race games whenever it's really effective can be fun. Uh, so I think it'll be a fun one. I think Sentinel and I'm a Pro pick up at least their first map of the tournament here. And I would say a 3-1 victory as well for Mirage and Darcia. But I think it'll be fun to watch no matter what. Uh, it's always fun once you get later into the tournament for the Swiss rounds because it kind of pairs people down and you start seeing people play against other teams that are ranked similarly. So you get a lot more close matches, whereas until the previous round until we get to the next games. round, until we get to the next matchup, and then yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you say three one from Mirage and Darcia. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on the opposite foot here. So Mofo and Sentinel haven't picked up a win yet, but they are starting to get that timing together just from having to play the match, and they've been very good about getting in their matches, and out. they have been very good on that. Um. It's going to be a tough fight, but I think if they put in a little bit of practice, this is their chance to get their first win in the tournament. Um, but it's going to be a difficult one just because, like you guys mentioned, Mirage and Darcy are, are, are seasoned players and have played together in, what, two tournaments now? Is it two? Yeah, two. At two? least two that I know of, yeah. Yeah. So they have that on the boat. But at the same time, they don't put in a lot of time outside tournament matches to play. So if MoFo and Sentinel can put in the time that they don't, I think they can I think they can get them. So I'll, I'm going to say MoFo and Sentinel 3-2, uh, squeezing one out. All right? Hey. So next round is the one I was alluding to earlier. We have Doom and OG Kuma versus Hextech Hero and Not Very Silent. <laughs> That's the most um, ridiculous thing. <laughs> Bregan, how about you start us off? Um, Hextech is a player that I've been working with a little bit to help him get a little bit more acquainted with the game. Really? Um, so he, he's he got some progress yet to be made. We've been talking about trying to get together to do a little bit more practice, things like that. But I've, I've helped him learn uh, some new things about the game. So him and Silent, uh, depending on if they have played together at all, uh, could be making some moves and looking a little bit better, but I think this is a very tall order match for them. Doom and OG finding themselves this far down the list has to be a little bit shocking, and uh, it's definitely going to be... 
I would say less than fun for Hex and Silent, I think. Uh, Doom is one of those players, he usually doesn't make the same mistake twice. Uh, He can be predictable, uh, but when he has starts like that where he, you know, last time had almost nothing like the whole match, uh, you know, the slow starts. We already criticized that arsenal that he used for two-thirds of the match. Um, We're not going to see that same stuff out of him. He's going to be probably coming in fast and hard. And I think it's going to be a difficult day for them. So I expect a 3-0 for Doom and OG. But I am excited to see Hex play and see him learn and grow. And playing against a uh, player of Doom's caliber is always going to be fun. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna go next. Just I want to piggyback kind of what you said. Hex Tech Hero is, in my opinion, the most eager to learn player in the game. I, I think everyone here can agree. Anyone who's been in a lobby with him can agree that he wants to be a better player and he's willing to do put in the time and stuff uh like that so hopefully when he sees his next round he knows maybe put in a little extra time if he wants to pick up a few w's um (laughs) hex and silent do have a very tall tall order in front of them uh especially against this team who's probably a little angry right now and uh, like you said doom's not i guarantee you he's not going to be using those same slow arsenals he's going to be throwing Psycho Spears, you know, throwing out high damage moves and just attacking. It's trying to get it out of the way. Because that's the way me and Jay felt after a lot of our, our losses. And I'm sure that's what Doom and OG felt uh, are feeling right now. So it's going to be a very tough battle for Hex and Silent. And I'm going to have to say Doom and OG with the, with the 3-0. Uh, I'm going to piggyback off that as well. Um, but I'm also going to throw this out there. Hex, hit me up, man. I will work with you all week and get you prepared for the hail storm that's coming your way. Um, Could you guys stop piggybacking off of the word piggyback, though? Yeah, let me piggyback, piggyback off, off that. Of whatever <laughs> piggyback I want. To piggyback. <laughs> I can't uh, hail victory in favor of the winner. But I will okay. work with you guys. Help out with just vary up the vocabulary. There's things you can say. Like, I would like to elaborate upon. Elaborate on this piggyback. <laughs> All right, you got it. You want to piggyback off what he said, Invoker? You know I'm going to yeah. say piggyback for the rest of this podcast now, so. All right, so we're all on the same page. That's just right, happening. I'm all right. Out. Can't do it. Do you ever remember, like, piggyback rides were, like, actually a thing? If, like, people did that. They were, that was happening. There were people, like, giving other people piggyback rides at one point in time. <sighs> the good old days. Yep, I know. They're gone, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. For this match, um, I I don't know. You know, I know all four of these players. Um, again, Doom probably the least out of all of them. Although I know his reputation, um, I would say that just 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 looking at the names and what I know about these players, Doom and OG are probably going to take it. But I wouldn't be too surprised to see Hex Second Silent take at least one off of them. I'm going to go conservative and say it goes three one uh, to Doom OG. But I. I wouldn't be surprised to see one or even two games go to Silent and Hextech uh, because they, they do have skills and they have know-how in the game. And yes. Well, to be honest, I wasn't impressed with what I saw out of Doom and OG in the match that I watched. So just based on everything that I have, I mean, I wouldn't be too surprised to see a win or two come out of Hextech and Silent here. But I do yeah. think the win will go to Doom and OG. All right. You, yeah, you bring up some good points there. You do. All right. So uh, you got something you want to add, Evo? Yeah, I was just uh, concur with what Brigid said. I promise you, Doom will not make that same mistake twice. That's probably true, yeah. Alright, so next round. Some poor Mario, which their team name changes every time I say it, versus It's Orange Snow. Um, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll start us off here. So, Kamikaze Choices um, did very well the first round, barely lost their second round. But, like everyone's saying, they're a team who just constantly, they've been together for probably second longest out of every one other team. So they have that synergy built up. I feel like this match is going to be the first one they they do really strong in and take with a solid, clean 3-0 victory versus uh, Orange Snow. Not because Orange Snow's lack of skill, but because poor Mario have the team synergy and they know what to expect from their opponents. Um, not, I don't even think they, like Brandon said earlier, they play very safe arsenals. I think they're just going to stick with that just in case any shenanigans that Orange Snow brings. And uh, poor Mario going to take it 
I'm officially changing the name of poor Mario to the Dairy Queens because their shit's so vanilla. Oh my god. Whoa, shots fired. Can we can we edit that horrible pun out, please? <laughs> oh, we're live. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, Evo, you might as well just take it on from here. Piggyback. <laughs> um. I hate you. I mean, how do you? You <laughs> said it a thousand times. You can't, you can't prepare for one, baby. So. Uh, Is it an appropriate I mean, time to also say that I, I just pulled up whenever you guys keep making these choices to say the word piggyback over and over when you, someone you love is making poor choices and it's like a woman sobbing at the sea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Right, Evo, Anyways, uh, so, um, I, I don't really know a whole lot what to say about this. I feel like Mario and uh, Twister are picking Rio, but um, like I said, you can't prepare for one. You never know what's on. So, yeah, uh, I'm just trying to give it to Mario. Choices in Rio. All right, Bregan, do you have a uh, lighter side for this matchup? A lighter side? No, I'm just making memes over here. Uh, it's, who are they playing again? It's Orange Snow, a.k.a. It's Orange Baby and Snow Rise. It's Orange Baby and Snow Rise? Yeah, but please refer to them by their team name. It's Orange Snow. I'm trying to make that stick. It's pretty good. Thank you. I practice. <laughs> and the Dairy Queens. Well, <laughs> and the Dairy Queens, that's going to stick. I would say for this round, they don't need to do much to adapt and overcome. Um, I think the their style that they currently have is perfect for Orange Baby and Snow Rise. Yes. Uh, I'm hoping to see some growth and change out of them. I'm not expecting to, but if they don't, uh, what they have here is definitely sufficient, I think, style-wise to <clears throat> deal with them. Yeah. Do you think a lot of teams do that? I mean, this is something I've thought about. And certainly when I was playing in the tournament with Kanye, it was something that we were consciously aware of and trying to implement in our strategy was changing gears and not being predictable. And I'm not, I'm not saying that we did that as well as we would have wanted to, but is that something that you feel is an overall theme throughout these tournaments? Do players take it to that level? I feel certain. Me and Geignan, back when I team was Geignan, we, we tried to um, make sure... Because we built new arsenals every round. Like, we would delete everything we had and come up with an arsenal or two for every level. So we wanted to make sure that people didn't know if we were going to go janky or go normal. But then when, we played with, when I played with Jay, we tried to be more straightforward. So it just, I think it just depends on the team. Okay. I think it just depends on the team. Uh, what are your predictions for the matchup there, Invoker? Uh, okay, so uh, I know a little bit about all these players. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and agree with everything you guys have been saying. I think that poor choices in Mario are going to take it. Um, you do see some pretty wild uh, outlandish stuff come out of the horns and snow. Uh, so it wouldn't be too outlandish for me to uh, see them take at least one of these matches. But uh, choices in Mario with that synergy, that time together, they're, they're going to be... They're just going to be tough for, for Orange and Snow to beat based on what I've seen uh, from, from, from their play. So... Not to say it's impossible, but I would favor I would favor choices of Mario here, and I'll say three one. Yeah, y'all are gonna have to bear with me for a moment. I'm taking a pit stop, so I'll be on. I'll be MIA for a minute, but I can hear you guys. I just want to talk. All right, All right then we will press cool. on then. All right, next round we have Warduck. Put that at <laughs> Team Warduck and Team the First Wipe. So that is Daffy Duck and Wardog Akuma versus. Wipes forward and the first scabop. Who wants to start us off here? It's a Voker uh, Sure, yeah, I haven't right. gone first, I guess. Um, so, this is an interesting matchup. Um, I, I would say that out of all of these players, there are really no just like powerhouse players that are, you know, proven winners already. So,. Uh, it's going to make for a really interesting game, I think. And I think that when I've been watching these tournaments overall, in the, in the matches that I have watched, uh, these are the best matches. When you get when you get the players that, that, that don't have that seasoned experience, that aren't 
veterans of the game that know exactly what's going on at all points in time. You, you tend to get a little bit more chaos, but a lot more fun in the matches. So I'll definitely be watching this one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that I do believe that Daffy and Wardog probably have the experience edge, but maybe I'm wrong there. I mean, this is actually, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this wipes forward, and I'm thinking to myself, that's a newer player, but I forget, that's Bromeo. That's not, <laughs> that that's, is not Bromeo. That's, not, that's not a newer player, so... In the middle of my sentence there, I realized that, and I'm going to have to recant that a bit. It's, I don't know. This is a really even one. I'm like, Daffy and Wardog have some pretty serious experience, but Skaboss showed himself to be no joke in the last tournament, and uh, and Bromeo is, is just a solid player overall. So I, I, this is a tough one to call. Uh, it's going to be high action, uh, really high pace, because a lot of aggressive players are on that list, uh, and it's just going to be really fun to watch. Uh, you know, it's tough. I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to be a nail-biter, and it's going to go 3-2 to Wipes and Scott Boss. That's what I'm going with. All right. Uh, Bregan, what are your predictions? Um, I think this is going to be one of the closer ones of this round, so I think it'll be fun to watch. Um, well, actually, you know, a lot of them are going to be closer. Uh, but this is this is going to be a fun one for sure. Uh, Daffy and Wardog, I think, have the advantage in individual skill and I think Wipes and Ska have shown better cohesion so far but I think that's still going to be trumped by Daffy and Wardog as long as they don't go in because like, I felt like they went kind of potato mode last round uh, no offense <laughs> I was expecting more out of you folks than I saw in round two uh, they, they, they kind of potatoed out round two and so I think if they don't do that to quite the same extent this round, uh, I will expect to see a win from them. Um, I would say a 3-1. 3-1 wow. for Daffy and Wardog? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, I yeah, think just... you're wrong, Bregan. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> all right, so... irrelevant. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Burn. Who is this person again? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not the face of Phantom Dust, and I get exclusive interviews with Microsoft. Okay, my bad. I wasn't interviewed. I was just a guest <laughs> on the show. I'm just, I'm just kidding, man. So yeah, this is definitely going to be one of the more entertaining matchups in terms of uh, paired skill levels, um, and because all players are pretty aggressive. Daffy probably the least aggressive of them, but still gets in there. He just has a slower start than the other ones. Um, Daffy and Wardog, I feel, are better players, but I'm still going to give it a 3-2 to Wipes and Scuboss uh, because they work better together, and I feel like Wardog is going to rush in and, and get killed <laughs> because <laughs> Wipes and Scuboss are... They're, they, they set up pretty quick. Wipes and Scuboss don't... You know, I haven't... I can't recall straight off the top of my head, but usually they run... They're not running vibration. They're not doing bravery. They're just picking up some attacks and going. Uh, so when Wardog goes in, uh, head rushing, he's going to get taken out, double team, while Daffy's chill, trying to get on vibration or, you know, uh, get his slightly slower startup. So I'm going to say 3-2. It's going to be a very close match, though. Uh, I think it's going to be at least... It's gonna, so I'm going to say 3-2 for uh, the first wipes. All right. The first wipes, yeah. The first wipes. All right, so the next round is Bregan's match. We have Bregan and I'm back, by the way. So uh, I'm giving it 3-0, Daffy Warduck. 3-0, wow. Whoa. Look at that. Somebody right. else who matters agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> you wow, guys were both wrong. I can't wait to watch this. Bromeo's going to put this slap down on him. All right, Bromeo. Let's put some money on this. Let's do it right now. Let's put <laughs> some Let's put I some will. credits. Let's put some skills. Give me some Will of the Wisp. Kidding me? I'll bet 100,000 credits. <laughs> I'll tell you I don't what, even have that me. right now. I'll, I'll bet you uh, every rock shot you own for uh, three armor. Every four. slide laser? No, 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 no. No, no. I will bet every rock shot you own versus every slide and twist laser I own. Oh. But you, got, but you, guys, the, are, you guys are agreeing with each other. No, no. No, no, I was two are on the other side. I was speaking no. for oh, it was nobody. Directed to me. I want those slide lasers. All right, so we have a bet. So uh, you guys All better right. put on some work. I'm not betting nope. anything. I need my skills. I feel very All right, so next round we have Bregan's match, which is Bregan and Gotrix, which I uh, – Evo, what's their team name? Real quick. Rogue Tricks. 
<laughs> awful. That's bro not bad. tricks. Bro tricks. Okay, bro. That's fine. Dirty. I don't. Yeah, I don't like it. But bro tricks. I did ask. Also, versus accurate for what we do. Oh. Zexus and Sardonic Jester, who I also couldn't come up with a team name with because Zexus' name is difficult, and I'm not even going to try. So, Evolution, take this one. Uh, uh, okay, so if Zexus and uh, Sardonic uh, listen to this podcast and give what I suggest a, a chance of letting Zex take support and Sardonic take a lead role, um, I think that they're going to... Uh, smash on Reagan and Grotrix. And that's no, um, you know, I'm not saying anything negative towards Bregan and uh, Grotrix. It's just that Texas is impossible to hit. Um, and based on prior experience, the team uh, of the, the synergy team hitting isn't exactly one with the old Mayor McFilthy. So um, I'm going to base that off of that. Now, if, if they keep where they're at and Grotrix uh, does start putting in the the double team and uh, duo that Bro Tricks could be, um, then it might go the other way. But as of right now, I'm going to give it a three-two. Uh, Zex and Sardonic. Evolution's prediction brought to you by Salt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Invoker. Um. Okay, I feel a little differently about this, and it's because there is no Salt going into it. Maybe, uh, but no, I think that. Uh, I think uh, Bregan and Gotrix are going to take this one 3-2. Um, okay. I think Zex and Sardonic are going to put up a fight, but as you guys were hitting on before, there seemed to be sort of still just uh, some missing synergy there. Uh, and I haven't seen a whole lot of Bregan and Gotrix together, but what I know of those two players tells me that going into round three of this tournament, they're probably going to have a lot of that smaller stuff figured out and Bregan makes, like, absolutely no mistakes, and, I, and I'll say that's probably true for Zexus as well. Uh, but for, for some reason, my, my gut feelings tell me this is going to Bregan and Gotrix 3-2. All right. 3-2, Bregan, Gotrix. So this match is going to be one I'm looking forward to. Um, Bregan versus Zexus alone I would watch, uh, but you put that in a tag sitting, and now you really got me interested. Um, Zexus and Zardonic have been looking a little rough, while Bregan and Gotrix, I feel, have only are getting better every time you watch them. Gotrix has been sneaking online at like 1 o'clock in the morning and, and been putting in some time. So with that in mind, I'm going to have to agree with Invoker and say 3-2 in uh, Bregan and Gotrix's favor. Um, but they're all going to be close matches. I feel if Zexus and Sardonic can capitalize on what Evolution stated earlier, then they, then they, could, then they could take it. If they take advantage of some moments, um, take advantage of some double teams and stuff like that, they could take it. But I think with the, if they keep playing the way they are playing, Bregan and Gotrix are definitely going to take it. <clears throat> Anyone else have anything to add to that? I mean, I guess I'll chime in a little bit on it, just because yeah. you know, I've watched enough. I feel like I can usually kind of third-party myself a bit. Um, watching myself and Gotrix versus Zex and Sardonic, I see a very similar... Uh, path for both teams, whereas I feel like they both haven't found their footing yet, and uh, it, it's a very similar thing. We see Zexus, you know, probably one of the best support players in the game, even if you may not recognize his play style as support right off the bat. Uh, he's very good at that, and he's trying to play a lead role here, which is kind of a new thing for him. And he's, not, I wouldn't say he's doing poorly uh, by any metric, but him and Sardonic, they haven't quite found that you know, fifth gear yet. They haven't gotten into that cruising. Uh, they have flashes of really good play and then some real head scratchers, and they tend to get caught out. And I'd say it's the same for me and Gotrix. Uh, we have some matches where we'll get in and we play. We'll play, say we play two rounds on Palace versus somebody, for example. We'll get in and we'll just absolutely smash and dumpster, and you're like, man, look at these guys go. And then, like, the next round, it's like uh, we got our ass on our heads just running around, you know, like everything's on fire and we don't know what we're doing. And it, it, we haven't quite hit that cruise control gear ourselves either. So I'd say both of us and Zexus and Sardonic are in a very similar position, and it'll depend on really which team shows up uh, or if either team has found that fifth gear, that you know cruising gear, and managed to get in it and show some consistency. But otherwise, it's a complete toss-up. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, next round... Oh, okay. oh boy! So, oh boy! So, 
Uh, what is their team name? I forgot. I'm Kanye Ebony, or I'm Con- I don't know. Something, something Ebony else. West. Ebony West. Yeah, it was something dumb. All right. Team <laughs> Ebony West versus Team Murder Machine. Uh, whoever wants to start off, go ahead. I will be quiet. Uh, nobody in this game prepares quite like murder. I mean, this everyone calls Sandal the, you know, the mad scientist of Arsenal building, but um, I don't think there's anyone on this game that is prepared for every situation as much as murder is, and still manages to stay out of the vanilla uh, category of playstyle. Um, he's ultra defensive, uh, quite like Ebony, um, except, you know. Not as so much as to his arsenal build isn't meant to completely wipe out yours. Um, more keep him safe while he's still dealing massive amounts of damage. Uh, Kanye and Ebony have shown both sides of coin with how they play. Um, I think that Murder will be prepared for both the same arsenal. So as much as Kanye and Ebony with my team beat, after witnessing how they did against Doom and OG, I'm definitely going to go with Murder and War Machine, uh, Mur- Team Murder Machine on this with a 3 1 victory. All right, Invoker? <clears throat> so, obviously, you said 3 1 to Murder and War Machine, you said? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. Um, okay, well, so these are, I mean, this is going to be a really good match, obviously. Um, these are two of the top teams in this tournament, uh, to my mind, anyway. Um, <clears throat> I don't. It's it's a little bit jarring though, having watched what Kanye and Ebony did the last time they were out, and it's just a big game changer to me, knowing that they are. Well, I've always known they were able. It's a big but, game changer. They used to tax now. Well, well, <laughs> it, it, it sounds funny, but you know, if it was me prior to watching that match, I would think to myself, okay, so we're gonna need orb. Like we're gonna be needing to be expect, you know, our aura to be at like nothing. We gotta we gonna have low low cost attacks, all, all of that stuff. Um, but you know, it, it's not so much that I have ever thought they weren't able to play with attacks so much as, and more particularly Ebony than Kanye. But Kanye falls right in line with that too. Is that they're just not they they like to play the jank. They like to play that uh, the quantum decay and the violent change we were talking about earlier. It, that's just their style. That's the way they like to play. Um, but now that they've come out and shown, hey, you know, not only are we able, we're, we're willing to, to, to just sort of square up. Um, it, it's a toss-up for me which, which way this goes. Uh, definitely, uh, you said that Murder's one of the players that prepares the most, but how do you prepare now? You know, what do you do? Do you take those useless orbs to be that they're not going to that they're not going to even... Entropy with a reincarnation and a Tiger Strength 3 spell Uh-oh. vampire. These are spoilers now. Watch out now. This is... <laughs> no, uh, so basically what I was getting at is that this could go either way. Uh, I feel like we're going to be in for a treat no matter what happens. Uh, if I just had to put my gut feeling to it, I, I got, I gotta, I'm also going to say I think Kanye and Ebony are going to take this one out 3-2. Uh, I mean, that's, my, that's my prediction. Um, and I'm not basing that on anything in particular. Uh, but I do think that their synergy is probably stronger than that of Murder and War Machines, despite the fact that War, uh, Murder and War Machine don't seem to have synergy issues. But Kanye and Ebony have been playing together for a very long time, even if it hasn't been in a tournament setting, and they seem to understand each other's styles very well. So, and I said it before, I think that they're going to be the team to beat here, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them come away with the win. Though I also wouldn't be surprised to see Murder and War Machine come away with the win, but I will... Put my prediction to Kanye and Ebony 3 2. Uh, I guess what I would say is that one thing I, I, I don't see anybody touching on is it's double wheeler versus double jumper. Both teams, you know, are uh, very good. I would have them in my top three right now. Uh, they both look, you know, pretty solid. I would say Murder and War Machine. Uh, it's hard to say because I've only seen one round out of them. I don't want to call it an overperformance, but I, I don't know if that's going to be their consistent level every round. Because we've only seen one round, so you can't, you know, no other data to work off of. So I think they looked good in that round. Uh, Kanye and Ebony, I think everybody has seen a lot of. We have seen two rounds out of them. We've seen them play together forever, uh, despite this being the first tournament together. Um, so I think we know what to expect. I th- so what I would say is I'll, I'll give prediction A and prediction B. If this is a straight-up brawl, uh, I think Kanye and Ebony take it. 
if Murder and War Machine come in with some nasty double wheeler tech, uh, don't forget they are double wheelers. Uh, it is much easier to place environmentals on them, and there's lots of other nasty things that you can do to a double wheeler team who chooses to not have one jumper on there. So if Murder and War Machine come in with some innovative, nasty uh, double wheeler tech, I think they take the series, but if they just fight them, I think uh, Kanye and Ebony taking it. All right. I will say this yeah, is I one team a better I, fighter. I never like playing them in a tournament. I will say that. All right. I don't think anybody so, does. Yeah. I, oh, so much. To I, remember I was just saying just then, I think Murder <laughs> has the best mechanical skill out of everybody there. Ebony is just close I second. Wanna, I want to touch I up on I agree with one. that. Um, and just a quick uh, example as to how buys have screwed over matchups and so on. Uh, you have X-Tech and Silent. Your, hold on, your mic is like really far away from your mouth or something. You're coming in really soft. Best thing, best thing. Very cool. It's a little better. It's a little better, yeah. All right. All right, so buys have really screwed this tournament over. Um, Silent and Hextech, because of buy, now have to face Doom and OG, which would not have been a matchup, I think, that would have happened if one of the buy. And Murder, now because of the buy, have to face Connie and Ebony. Uh, another one I don't think would have happened in round three. Uh, if they hadn't had the buy, so <laughs> sorry guys, you can uh, blame uh, whoever the last team was to join the tournament at the last second. I'm gonna look at it. <laughs> or I those people honestly... that dropped out of the tournament. Who the fuck does that anyway? I mean, what kind yeah. of asshole just drops out of the tournament? <laughs> <laughs> I would rather play Zanxus and Evo <laughs> than freaking Kanye and Ebony. <laughs> and only because I don't like prepping for Kanye and Ebony. <laughs> I'm I don't just like lazy. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the next round is going to be – oh, man. Okay, so next round, really fun one. Shadow Shield and Esper 51 versus Zanxus and Evolution. Uh, I'm, I'll go ahead and start us off here. So like I said about the last round, Shadow and Esper, especially Esper, has shown – like, like Reagan said, they still do have a lot of kinks in their gameplay, but Esper is trying to address those issues, and I don't think this is a game where it's going to happen, but I, I do think this is a game where we're going to see it start to form a lot more. Um, but since this is the third round and teams are getting more even in place, they do have a very tough road ahead of them in the form of Zanxus and Evo, who are only getting nastier as the rounds progress. So, if Shadow and Esper are able to build properly and know who they're going up against, I think they have a chance. But since I don't think they're going to do that, I'm definitely going to give it the 3-1 in Zanxus and Evolution's favor. But it's going to be a brawl, and it's going to be a fun one to watch for sure. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. Um... Evo has shown oh, Evo has gotten a lot better since he started playing with Zan, and it and it's showing in scrim matches and it's showing in tournament matches. So, I still think Zan and Evo take it three one. What about you, Invoker? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, it's a tough one. Sh Shadow and Esper, um, just a lot of good players in this match. Uh, Zanxus and Evo, I think, are going to take this. Uh, just, just looking at it from the top down, just, just a flash judgment there. I think Zanxus and Evo are going to take it. Probably three one is that's that's probably my bet as well. Um, it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, Shadow and Esper creep out with a win here, just because they have this year's mechanical skill for it. But there's just there seems to be so much synergy and practice and just overall. I don't know. Zanxus and Evo are taking this very seriously. I've played against them um, since they've been a team, and yeah. it's really fucking scary. So <laughs> I, I, it doesn't matter what team was on the other side of that. I'd have a similar outlook to this, um, and, and I'm going to have to say it's going to be Zanxus Evo 3-1 in the best-case scenario for Shadow and Esper. I want to add in something real quick before you start breaking. I'm sorry, but so do this I. is a team where it, going to go Zanxus and Evo is one team I do not – that I hate the fact that I, we're, me, myself, as a double jumper team. This is a team you do not want to go double jumper against. Because Zanxus, 
loves killing jumpers. I don't know if you guys know this. He loves just destroying everything you have planned for defending yourself. And, like, you're going to wish you could cartwheel. <laughs> so this mm -hmm. is a, that's another thing that I think Shadow and Esper have going against him. And against other teams, it wouldn't be as much of an issue. But Zanxus builds against jumpers, and Evo will help him do that. So with that in mind, I'm going to have to give even a stronger 3-1. A stronger 3-1. <laughs> a, a stronger 3-1. Three 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 <laughs> still, okay. still going to pick up one, but it's going to be a stronger... Uh, there's going to be some beatdowns in there. Okay. That. There's going to be some beatdowns where you see someone run around without a shield like a chicken with their head cut off. <laughs> so, so real quick before Brigham takes over, we had a little friendly banter in our group chat between Esper and I, and I told him uh, I can't wait to face punch him. And uh, Shadow Shield said, well, this is going to be an easy match. We already know what they're going to use. And I posted the meme that Shadow created in our little chat if you want to add it to the podcast. What? <laughs> yes, please add that. Alright. Well, have you, maybe, have, do it, maybe do it after you give your prediction there, uh, Bregan, because I don't know if you can multitask. Know, can, can you guys beat Esper 1v1? Yeah, I did in the <laughs> tournament. I, I beat him so hard I lost. 3-0, so... Uh, I've played Esper three times in a 1v1 tournament, and uh, the last time we played, I got uh, two wins off of him. And wow. he back and beat me in my ass. So well, I've never even come close uh, to beating him Zanx 1v1. <laughs> lost to Esper 1v1 due to some shenanigans, but still lost. But I, I don't think those are fair... Well, no, it doesn't have anything to do. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought I, you were comparing the two. Okay. No, I no. play Esper, like, if I actually have some even, like, decent 1v1 arsenals built, we usually go 50-50. Really? Mm -hmm. I was just yeah, curious. I, like, I, I wasn't trying to break comparison or anything. I was just I was curious, because I can't even fucking come close to beating in 1v1, so... Yeah, we usually go 50-50 uh, when we play. Wow. Um, we've had... I think we even posted a series of it once. Uh, that is impressive, because that guy doesn't fucking ever let up when you're playing 1v1. He uses every goddamn trick in the book, and he's goddamn tricky. Yeah, like running up and down the escalator on Palace. It's real fun. Alright. Oh. <laughs> Bregan? Well, uh, so for this matchup, um, I agree with a lot of what's been said, and I guess I'll just elaborate a little bit about Shadow Piggyback. and Esper. <clears throat> um, I don't know that anybody you know doesn't know about these guys. You know, it's Ice Sword and Psycho Burst, right? With the occasional... Uh, fresh breath of Dance of Death, which is so different than Team Cycle Ice Burst. Burst. Yeah, and so it's a double melee team, which makes it difficult. We have seen Esper try and you know change up his style because that's really the thing. You can't run, you can't run both melee. Like it just it doesn't work, even on Panorama. Like you need somebody shooting something out of range so that you're not clobbering on top of each other. And we have seen that with them. We've seen that be a difficulty for them. Um, and my opinion has always been playing with Shadow Shield is a tricky situation. Like, A or B needs to happen. A, Shadow Shield needs to find something he can do as well as he does Psycho Burst, like something else. Or you basically just have to go all in on that strategy because it's, it's a strategy that's pretty difficult to shut down, like environmental or race-wise. Like, he almost always has a way back in um, with Psycho Burst or Dance of Death. You know, and and I feel like Esper needs to go A or B. Like it, they need to either have Shadow pick up something else he can do just as well, which I haven't seen yet. I've seen him run other arsenals, and I'm not nothing is quite the same as when he runs Psycho Burst or Dance of Death. It's just not the same. Or they need to go all in on that strategy, which I've yet to see them do. It's worth noting that Shadow Shield in a tournament took down Zanxis in a one v one tournament with Psycho Burst. Hmm. He did the same thing to Guinan with Psycho Burst. And so if they're playing here, you know, maybe they've got that itch. Uh, Evolution has shown a propensity for taking a lot of damage, and Zanxus has fallen victim to it before. Uh, I think if they go all in on that strategy or they find a stride, they have a real shot here. Though I do have to give the advantage to Zanxus and Evo because they have shown more consistency and innovation in this tournament so far. So what do you, what do you predict in terms of win-loss ratio here? I, basically, as I said, I'd have to give the advantage a 3-2 to Zanxis Division, maybe a 3-1. It really depends on if Shadow and Esper find any footing. Um, yeah. I like what you said about on one the of them having to switch. I'm sorry. One of them has to switch from the melee range. I would keep Esper at melee range, personally, because his moves are more spammable, and Zanxis is too hard to hit 
to try to go every seven aura with a psycho burst. So I think Esper with the swords is their best bet, and Shadow Shield just do the Rian thing. But well, part of the difficulty is you're looking at two of the least variable players in the game. Like, yeah, that's why. So, that's why I said Rian. <laughs> Ice Sword. You know, you take Esper off of Ice Sword, and you're like, eh. you take Shadow Shield off the of Psycho Burst, and you're like, ah. you know. But they both they, they both can't do it. One of them has to back off, and I yeah. feel like out of the two. Uh, despite both being very unvariable players, I think Esper is the one that has the more potential for change. You are right there, yeah. I feel like Shadow Shield falls up like he has. He he runs like a Tiger Strength uh, reincarnation deck, is really like his only switch hit, and that's like right. as vanilla as it gets too. And that's like the only other thing he's hey, got man. that he plays at a normal level. Everything else, like he he's. You know, breaking into that you know top A tier, almost S tier player when he's running Psycho Burst and stuff like that, but when he's not, it's noticeable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You. You. Yeah. You're right. I feel like you are right. I, feel like I didn't. I didn't look. I didn't look at it like that. Oh, it just made yeah, me think of something right. fairly interesting, actually. Though I think this is a this is something that might be true about Phantom Dust in general, in that finding your strategy and sticking to it as a one trick only can really be effective in one v one, but in Tag, there are too many answers, you know. Like so, Shadow and Esper have had a lot of tag. success. But, well, no, I'm just saying, like they've had wild success in one v one, just staying with the same trick. But in, in tag, any particular trick that you want to stick with is going to have its counter because there are two arsenals to figure it out with, as opposed to one. And two people, and some things like me, double melee, just for an example, sure. doesn't work at all in tag. Just like Bregan said. Yeah. So yeah. What is this word you've invented, melee? <laughs> how people from South melee. Carolina say it. So you stay in Utah. Is that the? And stay cold. All right. So <laughs> I'm not next in Utah. Discussion. I'm in Portland, and it's wonderful here. Uh, Oregon. I thought huh? you were in U- Utah. I always assumed you lived in Utah. I lived okay. in Utah, and then I moved a year and a half ago. I can't keep up with all your life events. I thought you lived in Washington State, so. <laughs> I thought you lived in Canada. All right. So <laughs> next round. Our next discussion, excuse me. So after seeing all the te- most of the teams play more than one game now, uh, does anyone have any new thoughts on any of the teams that they didn't have previously? Well, uh, I mean, there was some stuff I was talking about earlier you, that you sort of hushed me up on. Yeah, this, this and this is the about. moment. Yeah, this is the moment I was talking. Do you guys want to start from the top of the teams, or do you guys want to discuss certain teams? How do you guys want to do it? Well, the thing I was talking about earlier wasn't really necessarily team specific, although there were teams that were involved in it. It's more of a tournament setup. The way that you guys said, you know, no, no people that have won the tournament together playing together creates a pretty unique dynamic and offers a, a new perspective to the tournament scene in this game. And I think that what it's done is is it's had some sort of unexpected, at least from my end, unexpected uh, results in that teams like Kamikaze, Mario, and some poor choices have been sort of vaulted to the top of uh, of the p- potential talent level of these teams just because of the fact that they've had so much time together in the past. Yeah. And, you know, so you got uh, Kamikaze, Mario, and some poor choices. you got Mirage and Darcia. These teams, I think, have an edge over the others in general just because they, they didn't have to figure out how to play with a new partner, so... It's definitely, it's definitely interesting. Yeah, so that's one thing we, me and Eva, when we were discussing it, that's one thing we wanted to make sure happened. Not that certain teams get an edge, but just the the meta is changed um, in that sense. So. Yeah, out of every every way you could look at the game and say, let's sort of rock the boat, I think that's one of the ways that probably rocks it the most. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, so, do, uh, do you have something to add to that, Bregan? Uh, I was going to say, it's definitely favored some teams, like uh, Connie and Ebony especially, both players yeah. that had yeah. been near the top but never really had Similar. a chance to break in. You know, now they're, you know, uh, at least by this tournament standards, a powerhouse team. Yeah, I think uh, Connie and Ebony probably benefited the most because they both, they'd never been in a tag tournament together before, but they have pit in the most time together. Period. If you look at the scoreboard, Kanye and Ebony mm. have almost. I think Kanye is second in terms yep. of tag team wins, and Ebony's like fifth or fourth or something like that. Only Zexus is in front of Kanye. Yeah. Yeah, which is blew my mind because I was in second place and Kanye jackass. <laughs> He's got I like need my second place. Wins or something? I need my like, second place. I haven't um, been in a while. Am I still even top ten? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. I don't know. Pretty far. Sure. Yeah. 
I mean, I definitely I benefited Kanye. I would be surprised and if I had been bumped out of top ten because I I've spent so much time with Phantom Dust just doing videos and tournament stuff instead. So like yeah. I don't I don't play as much anymore. And you got Red Dead. The game's pretty awesome. I heard. Oh, was, <laughs> I know. I'm just I'm that just, was just kidding like with for you. A week. I'm just playing with you. All right. So do you guys want to go down the list individually of teams, or do you guys want to hit on certain teams? How how would you guys prefer to go down? I'm old with whatever. Yeah, whatever works. Okay, how about we discuss every team, but let's let's try to keep it short, okay? Sure. All right, let's try to keep it short and uh, simple. So what we're discussing here is um, after seeing them play, what do you think of them now? And we already just touched on this a lot, so like I said, just try to keep it um, short and sweet. Uh, this We'll start from the bottom again. Let's start with uh, Mirage and Darcia. Uh, Bregan, go. I... Uh... Shoot, they're not on the bottom of the list for me, but okay. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the bottom of the round matches. I'm going up. Oh, well. That's what I'm looking at. All right. Uh, Mirage oh. and Darcia uh, haven't shown as good of a showing as they did in the last tournament. Uh, they had a top eight finish. They had a lot of 3-0 victories. They looked pretty hot. Uh, they had some nasty erase in this last tournament. Uh, you know, they really you know, impressed me in the last one. And this one so far, uh, been kind of disappointed and the two, uh, I don't know. Want to? I don't want to say they're phoning it in, but like, it's, I'll use the refinery match versus Exus and Jester earlier today as an example. Like, they just quantum quantum decayed themselves out of the match. You know, <laughs> like we're not seeing the intricacy to their race. We're just seeing them use purple moves. It doesn't <laughs> feel like there's a plan or like they're heading in a direction. Some of these times. Uh, Highway was the same thing. We just see him start throwing out violent changes, but uh, what's his bucket? Uh, Darcia was at seven capsules, and so was the two enemy teams. So, like, they weren't really making any progress on that either. You know, they, they're they using purple moves, but it doesn't feel like they have a plan. And so I've been a little disappointed in them because uh, I expected more. Uh, so I'm Did they almost beat you in uh, PD last match? Uh, last tournament, rather? It was a 3-0 in our favor. But they okay, I'm thinking of lane specifically for some reason. Like, like they like they had you on the ropes on lane or something. They had They're us on the ropes on working. lane, and I just well, barely fair, pulled so it Bregan, out. Bregan, Bregan, uh gave them a Christmas gift and allowed them to uh, deny Bregan the single screen. So uh, they chose nature, and without more, their one of the games are pretty effective. Huh. Yeah, it was a wedding gift. He'd gotten married just the week before. Oh, that was nice of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they chose to not let me run orb and then just go super hard into a race. It was effective. It was good. And that's that's part of what I'm building on is that back then they ran some really nasty race. It felt like it had direction. It felt impactful. And it felt difficult to work around. Whereas right now it just feels like they're using purple moves. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Evolution? Uh, yeah, I, I agree. It feels like they're phoning it in right now, and I feel like if they just take the time and effort to just put their minds together and come up with this stuff like they were the last one, then we'd be seeing a different team in a different place right now. Yeah. I wouldn't say phoning it in, but not, not the same team and not the same it, it, level of effectiveness. Simply put, they're not putting in the time in between matches. I think that's what it boils down to. You could tell they don't have the practice with the arsenals that they have uh, built up and stuff like that. Invoker, do you got anything to add to that? Oh, uh, yeah, well, just to piggyback off of what you were saying there before, uh, you know, I, I, even, I'll say, even if they were shorting you in. up your ass in a minute. <laughs> hey, I was, you missed what I was doing there. I pulled, I pulled out phoning it in, too. That was, <laughs> even if they, even if they're phoning it in, I think they still have more experience and better synergy than a lot of the players in this tournament, so they still have the potential to win a lot of games. Uh, but I do think that, what you guys are saying is true, that if they want to be able to match up against some of those top level teams, they probably need to put a little bit more time in uh, in between tournament matches. All right. Yeah. Okay, so next, MoFo, I'm a pro, and Sentinel1979. Uh, Evolution? Uh, to keep it short and sweet, as we're hoping to do, um, I think that these two players have a lot of potential, and that if they would... Um, reach out and touch base with some of the more veteran teams out there to get a little first-hand experience on how clean this energy needs to look, um, then they need to go ahead and, and do that if they're looking for um, As of right now, they're fresh, they're, they're fresh meat, really. Um, 
and they're learning new tricks about the game that we've known for 14 years. So uh, I, I think they need to reach out. They need to try and get a hold of somebody somewhere that can show them the ropes on what works, what doesn't, how to counter this, counter that, and they really need to look at some of Sandals' uh, tutorial videos to give them a better idea of arsenal builds and counter builds. All right. So what I'm going to do, we're just going to go up. I'm going to ask one person per team, okay? Everyone cool sure. with that? All right. Uh, I do want Dolan to take this next one, though, because it's his. It's one of his baby teams. Is that I, how you say your name? No. How do you okay. say it? <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> Dalen? Dallin. Yes. That's how I would pronounce it, yeah. All right. Dallin. All right, Dolan. Such uh, a white boy name. <laughs> Doom and OG Kuma. Doom and OG Kuma? You know, the, I, I liked them in round one. Well, I didn't like them in round one because I played them in round one. Um, they looked good in round one. We saw Doom doing Doom things, OG Kuma doing support things, and it worked out well. Um, they lost a couple of matches. It was a close series. I didn't feel like Doom did Doom things in round two. Um, I want to see Doom be Doom again. Uh, please make Doom Doom again, OG Kuma. <laughs> blame you because Doom can do no wrong. Make Doom great again. <laughs> Build a Doom! Mada. Mada. <laughs> Build a doom, Doogee. All right. Uh, which one of you want to take Hex, Tech, and Silent? Whatever. Um, I'll take it. Fine. Um, All right. He uh, Hex, Tech, and Silent. Uh, these guys, I mean, I touched on this earlier when we talked about it, but these guys definitely both have some skills. I know you talked about how you, you think that Hex, Tech seems to be one of the more eager-to-learn players, and that's a big thing. That's definitely a big thing. Somewhere back, way way back when I was a new player, and I was very eager to learn, and that's what made me a better than a lot of people in my position. So uh, that's something to look out for for sure. Um, and I, I, you know what? I expect to see at least something out of these guys. Silent knows what he's doing. It's just he plays annoying shit a lot of the time. Um, <laughs> and and Hextech, if he's that eager to learn, can be a great player too. So um, you know, I I hope to see some development and. For these players to turn into, well, we, we, we already kind of know what, what everybody <laughs> is in this community, but it's interesting to see what the different teams can be when you put them together, and I think they have the propensity to be something better than what they've shown so far. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add something to th that team real quick. Is Hexec has addressed to me, I, I mean, and we all played with Silent before, we know he gets a little angry when he plays this, not a secret, but Hex is such a chill dude. And he has addressed to me that it, it actually is affecting the way he plays when he plays with his partner. So I hope Silent can calm that down a little because I feel it will help Hextech play better. So well, that's actually a Silent, good combo, give, though. Give him a give him a chance. Um, he is very eager to learn. So if you're listening, calm it down a little bit and uh, give him the chance. Calm it down and stop playing those Enviros, and you know which ones I'm talking about. You bad. Oh my god. Oh, god. Uh, yeah, no. we're not. Um, yeah, we're not. We're, we're not going to start that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, I'll go for poor Mario. They... Uh, I had a brain fart who they played. Oh yeah, oh man. Their match versus Zexus and Sardonic was... They took it 3-1, but man was it not the prettiest gameplay I've ever seen out of them. Um, and even though they did lose in round 2, I feel like their game... Pl uh, poor Mario, sorry. I was talking fast. Some poor choices and Kamikaze Mario. Me. Dairy Queen. Uh, but Dairy I feel Queen, like their yeah. gameplay was a little smoother, even though they took a 3-1 loss. Uh, their gameplay was just smoother comparatively to their first round. So they're a team who we all have as their as one of the top, uh, and they don't they don't put in the hours like they used to. But I still feel like they're improving from just the little bit they do play. Uh, so I hope that's enough to carry them carry them to at least the top eight. I still see them finishing top four, personally. Alright, who wants to take Team Orange Snow? Well, Evo hasn't gone yet, right? Evo, do you want to take Team Orange Snow? Yeah, I don't care. Um, this team is, once again, uh, my most unpredictable team in the entire roster. Uh, I never know what to expect. Uh, although, oddly enough, this is the first time I have seen a team in any tournament or any player in any tournament paired with Orange that actually built Arsenal's to go with him. Yes. Uh, Otis, yes. But Surprise did uh, build a reduced entropy environment to go with Orange. 
uh, is that's it a first. With them, so, or is it just serendipity? Because I don't no, know. No, it. Snowrise had that arsenal when he played me in the 1v1 tournament. So I think it's just coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm getting at. I think it's just serendipity. I don't know if that was shit was planned. Listen, guys, you don't need to take credit away from the man. Let, him, let, <laughs> let the viewers think that he, they're working together, okay? All right. Sorry, let Orange no Snow. no one fall under the illusion that Orange Baby has a plan. <laughs> but He's Orange the Joker. Adapt, looks and like Snow, a Rise, a plan. Snow Rise adapted. Anyways, uh, thanks, guys, for ruining my train of thought. Uh, good, you guys good. Are good. Orange and Snow Rise, keep up the good work. Y'all are doing good. Uh, random shit for the win. There you go. <laughs> All right. Next, we have War Duck. Who wants to take War Duck? I'm War trying Duck. to think of what their last matches were. There was the. I'm looking up at it right now. Uh, yeah, last him. round was you. I'll take who, him. Hold on, real quick. Who was their first round opponent? I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't know. Uh, uh, go ahead, Dalen. Dalen, whatever. I believe they played Bregan. I'm calling you Bregan from now on. Dalen, real man, how are you fucking that up that bad? It's just not even that hard. Yeah, um, so you know, I'll reiterate what I said about them earlier. You know, this is a team that I think they're both solid mechanical players. I thought their play styles would mesh. And so far, I have to color myself disappointed uh, once again with these guys here. I've been looking to see more out of them. Daffy is a good long-range player, uh, good defensive, you know, fairly decent cartwheeler. War Dog shows a lot of aggression, especially in the mid and short range. And you think that would be a good match. And so far, we just, I, I feel like they potatoed round two. Round one wasn't super convincing. Um, I'm looking to see these guys step up because I think they're a top eight team. I think they're a team that should have a lot of easy, natural synergy. Uh, I'm not seeing it, though. I'm not seeing it, though. So I'm disappointed in that. I hope to see more out of them because I expect more out of them. Yeah. All right. uh, I have something to add that goes right. with what Murder said earlier with Hex and Sound. Um, Daffy had brought it to my attention that his game was thrown off when War Dog got a little frustrated. And I'm sure you guys have all played with a player that, you know, when they go down and they see their teammate in their spawn digging, it frustrates them. I've been there. A lot of people have. Um, and Daffy, you know, brought my attention that that had happened. And, he didn't have an attack in hand. He was digging. He was looking for an attack to help. But um, I want to, you know, I want to reach out to War Dog. You need to, you need to uh, try and keep calm and not let that frustration take over. Um, you know, Arsenal's come out backwards sometimes. It's just the RNG of the game. And, uh, you know, if you have good communication and your teammate tells you, hey, my shit's coming out wrong, slow it down a bit. Dial back. Set yourself up better, too, then look for shield you start rushing because uh, if your rush fails and you get you know hit heavy and start losing a lot of health, your teammate is not ready to come save your ass. He has so. some fair points there, Evolution, but I, you know, not everybody can just wait for their partner to put on their cape and save the day. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is <laughs> fill out the frustration. Sorry, I just wanted yelling. to make a dig at you. That was all. All right, yeah, I, I feel if Daffy and Wardog do get their communication down, they will be such a nasty team because they play. They're not dual melee. That you know, one's close range, one's long range. I think they'll be such a nasty team. All right, next we have Bromeo and the first Scabouse. Um, I'll take it. This is one of my. I like this team just because both they got everyone. I think Bromeo is easily one of everyone's favorite people to play with because he's. I want to say he's chill, but I think it's just because he never has a mic. But he doesn't never, talk. Yeah. He, he never. He never. He like has he a never mic. Quits. But he, he doesn't never talk. He never quits out of frustration and stuff like that. Yeah, he said something to me the other day. I was like, he had a mic in this whole time, dude. We played yeah. like four games. He always has the mic. Yeah. He just doesn't. Talk. Um. Well, this is another team, just like I said now. about Daffy he and War Dog. Um, if they get their communication down. Uh, they will also be a nasty team because neither of them play exactly the same. They each bring their own different strengths to the table. Um, yeah, that would be I, my dark horse for this tournament. Just just throwing that out there. Well, that would be yeah. my dark. That would be my dark horse. Yeah. Yeah. If they if they keep up what they're doing, I think they're only going to get better. And That's funny because Scoboth was in my dark horse for the last tournament too. I think you have a man crush. Right about that. You have yep, maybe. Crush. All right, maybe. All right, maybe. Scott Boss, <laughs> team, <call> team, <laughs> <laughs> team, Brotrix. All right, since you named him, what do you got, Evo? Um, this team is 
everyone. I haven't gotten to play them in spring matches yet. Um, in fact, I haven't even played with or against Gotrix since uh, his return. Um, but Reagan, on the other hand, as much as he likes to uh, blame the self-professed literal garbage, uh, he's you know still always as solid as ever. Um, I got mad respect for him. Uh, I think this team, with their existing synergy from the previous four tournaments they've played together, I think two of them they've actually won. Is that the right number? Can we get that right? I don't remember exactly, but me and Goat won at least one, possibly two tournaments together what? back in the I old days. I thought that wasn't allowed. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, uh, this was uh, in the old days, not, yeah, yeah. not in the re release. Well, that's still bullshit, Bregan. You're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> so, if this team can find that synergy that. Uh, they once had and come back together and if Goat can uh, find whatever it is that he's been lacking to bring himself back to the player that he uh, definitely was and is capable of being. Um, this you mean is, if he shows up with oh. attacks that actually hit? <laughs> Shade! Or a flash hole that he races. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that for the last round whenever we were going to play Jay and Math. <laughs> I sent shade to him because I'd been criticizing them for not testing a race defense. So I was like, hey, go, just bring a flash hole and we've won. I was referring to uh, the match against Doom on Sign where you kept yelling at him, you got a flash hole that, you got a flash hole that, and he wouldn't do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, this team definitely has the capability of being a, a top three, if not number one. So, um, got to find it. Just keep searching. Look deep within Gotrix's bubble. Wow. Believe me, right, that's my so favorite place to be. Next, we have Zexus and Sardonic Jester. So this is a team I was very high on when the first round started. And when I, after I saw their match with uh, some poor Mario, I was very disappointed in their play, but I didn't think about it. But I guess because, like you guys said, they their roles were a little confused. Um, and, it, and now that I look back at the match, that's exactly what it was. They didn't know who was supposed to be attacking, who was supposed to be behind. And they made some little mistakes here and there. Um, and the second round just kind of followed up on that. Even though they they won that one, it still wasn't the cleanest win. Um, I still I still have high hopes for them. And I still think they're going to end up in the top eight. Um, but I don't, I don't see them getting too far into the top eight because of, I don't think they're going to address the issues they have. I did play Sardonic for the first time in forever, a few days ago. He's um, actually pretty good. Yeah, he is very good. Uh, he's a very solid player, and I feel like he's a very good teammate for Zek, so I feel like if they can get their stuff together, um, they can make it further than what I'm giving them. Yeah, I felt uh, like when you said that you were selling them short, kind of. So that was just my feeling. They were. They it's were just based. Beat, you know, I thought they were yeah. the best team coming into the tournament. I yeah. was yeah. impressed with the I team going around two, and I hope they play like that in round three. Hexdeck Hero just said hey. that the stream is going offline. Stream went offline. Yeah. Sure I can see what's going on with OBS. Right. Are you still recording? Should we go on, or you want to wait? I mean, it's still recording. Okay, we're gonna go on so we can, we got. Uh, we got stuff to. I mean, do you want to just wait for a sec, just to see if you can get it back up, or? Uh, I mean, let's see. I mean, clearly there are people watching right now. I'll so. stop the stream.